Why is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap, and today we're taking a look at a deck that I created, Pixie Loki. Now, the main point behind this deck is that Pixie is actually kind of a weird card to utilize properly in Marvel Snap, and from my experience, where Pixie really shines is when you can pair it with Mobius. But you're not always going to be able to draw both Pixie and Mobius, and that's where Loki comes in. Loki is able to reset your hand and turn Pixie, which is kind of a bad card without Mobius, in my opinion, into just a random card from your opponent's deck that then costs one less and do the Loki thing. And the deck can also have the typical Loki backup plan with Quinjet plus Maria Hill, Snowguard, and Agent Coulson to make a big devil dinosaur in the meantime and a cheap mockingbird and then we have Eliath and dr doom which are just great end game cards and can can win the game just on their own uh fueled with the power of these other things just really really powerful effects but these cards are also really good when you can make them cheaper with Pixie, especially because this deck already wants to play a bunch of one-cost things with the Loki package here. We fill out the remaining slot with Rogue, which I think is a pretty good tech card right now, but there are a lot of different ways that you can change this deck. Specifically, in the clips that we're going to look at, we're, we're not even going to see Mockingbird because I just got that card today. Uh, I did put out a U YouTube short where I played Mockingbird and I do think that the card is decent in the deck, but if you don't have Mockingbird and you do have Pixie, I think there's a number of different five cost cards. We're going to see that I played Claw in that slot and I also played Spider Woman in that slot, which isn't a super commonly played card, but it's just like a 511 most of the time, which is pretty good. I think that's a great place to start too with some highlights that I wanted to look at. First, we're gonna take a look at some Agent Coulson high rolls. This is just a really good game for Agent Coulson and you can also see I have both Claw and Spider Woman in my hand. I believe I was initially not playing Doctor Doom in the deck and then decided to throw that one in later, but that's just to say there are a variety of different five cost cards that you can play and Agent Coulson also gives you a variety of different four and five cost cards to play around with. Now, we're high rolling in a number of ways this game. Pixie gives me a one cost Devil Dinosaur and I've got Quinjet on Onslaught Citadel and I also get to throw Devil Dino onto Onslaught Citadel so that will probably win that location barring a Shang-Chi for my opponent. But I felt comfortable filling up Onslaught Citadel here because I can still use Claw to add a additional power to that location, which will really surprise my opponent. But what will really surprise my opponent will be these Agent Coulson pools. They are going to Storm Limbo, which is a good play because I currently kind of control Limbo with Snowguard Hawk, but then Agent Coulson is going to give me a Cole Obsidian and a Gamora, both made twice cheaper by this Quinjet. So I'm gonna be able to drop 22 power into the flooded location this turn, which I just thought was awesome. And eventually my opponent will wind up retreating despite that snap. Pretty similar situation in this game where I'm gonna play Agent Coulson. I actually get a Devil Dinosaur from that and my opponent plays a turn three storm. Uh, so I'm gonna be able to drop Devil Dino into that flooded location and then we've got the Vault next turn and I'll be able to play one of these other five cost cards. And for that, I'm actually going to draw my second Devil Dinosaur off the top of my deck. So I will throw that down into the Vault. My opponent has Dracula Morbius over in that first flooded location. So they could potentially still add power there. That is a little bit scary. However, I'll be winning with priority. So I'll just be able to Eliath the only location and that will allow me to win with double devil dinosaur. Here's one more Eliath play. This time though, my opponent is also running Eliath, so you can't flame me for running Eliath. My opponent was doing it too. 
and we also have another The Vault game. So I'm just gonna play Eliath into The Vault, and that way I will definitely win that location. And then as long as I have priority, I'll be able to play my own Eliath next turn, which is pretty sweet. And I'm going to battle for priority by playing Nico and throwing a Hulkbuster, hopefully on the Nico 50-50 shot. And that gives me also the opportunity to pull that card into Nidavellir with Ghost Spider next turn as well. They actually don't play anything into the vault. They're just going to give me that location and decide to only play the Nidavellir here. Uh, and we can see my opponent has got a Phoenix Force kind of deck going on with Nimrod as well. Uh, but I've got Eliath. I've got the double Eliath here. Even if that first one misses, uh, this second one is sure to hit. So like I said, I can go Spider the Nico into Nidavellir and then Eliath them. And that is probably enough to get it done. I'll show this one though, just cause it's sweet. So Ghost Rider pulls over the Nico, so that gives me enough power now to win in Nidavellir alongside this Eliath. And they were planning on blowing up that Nimrod multiple times this turn, which would have actually beat me in the vault. So I'm glad I had double Eliath. This game is just a crazy high roll from both sides because I'm playing up against a destroy deck and Altar of Death is one of the locations. On turn four, I just decide to play my Doctor Doom into Altar of Death with the extra energy that I got from playing there last turn. I could have used Doctor Doom to try to win the location, but I thought this was more important. Continue to get that extra energy to potentially make a cool play this turn. Not actually going to wind up using that extra energy though. And then I'm gonna try to win that location with Snow Guard Hawk and not having priority on the final turn of the game. So that was my idea at least. And I'm gonna play Mobius to kick things off because I don't want my opponent to be able to play a free death. And then I'm gonna play Elsa Bloodstone into the altar just to again, grab some extra energy and toss priority to my opponent. So. That is the idea. However, my opponent has a crazy play on this penultimate turn. Four cards into Altar of Death. First, their Deadpool. This doesn't actually work out the best for them because this X-23 randomly lands back into the altar. It's gonna give them a lot more energy though, but they will wind up turning X-23 into a demon after they attach Hulkbuster to it. And then once it turns into a demon, then Altar of Death kills it, and then they don't get it back. So they will have a ton of energy, but maybe a little bit less power. And maybe Mobius is doing something to interact with them as well. But I know they're gonna be able to drop a bunch of stuff this turn. We do probably get to win an Altar of Death unless they Venom Center and the Wolverine flips over into that location. But barring that, I can still win this if I predict where they are going to place their null. And it's a tricky one, but I'm going to guess that they are going to play their null into Atlantis. And that's basically all I got. Let's see if it works. I mean, you kind of know it's in a it's in a little highlight video here, so you can kind of have an idea of where this was going. But I guess I'll just use this opportunity to say like part of the reason I think that this deck is good is because I think everybody should just want to play Mobius right now, especially with Mockingbird recently released. But really, uh, ever, I wind up resetting here, but I'm gonna make that exact same play in just a moment, just thinking over my options for one last moment. But Mobius, a really good tech card against a variety of decks, and this will be Rogue's shining moment in the video as well. There's the null from my opponent, and turns out they also had enough extra energy to play both Death and Deadpool alongside that null, just an absolutely busted turn. But we are gonna bust my opponent right back, steal that power from null, and throw down the Snow Guard Hawk to win in Altar of Death. And I think that's a genuine thumbs up for my opponent, but what do you think? Let me know down below. And we're gonna take a look at one final game to round out the video. And this is probably my favorite game of the whole video, but awkwardly, I kind of had to put it last because I'm not playing 
playing exactly the same deck in this one. As you can see, there is a Zabu currently in my hand. This was when Hell's Kitchen was the featured location. So I changed up the curve a little bit. I cut Maria Hill, so that way Hell's Kitchen would be more likely to find me Quinjet. And that just means the curve of the deck is a little bit different than it typically would be. I'm leaning into some Zabu synergies. I've got Nick Fury in the deck now. So uh, this is actually a Nick Fury highlight clip, which I think is just cool in of itself because that's a card that is not super commonly played. But here it just gets to do a bunch of work. So I'm going to play the Nick Fury into cloning vats here uh, just to trigger the nebula. Uh, we'll play it in the cloning vats. I'm not actually going to return the Nick Fury to my hand. I will fill it up with three random six cost cards as a refresher if you don't remember what Nick Fury does there. So we'll throw that back in the... Uh, or we'll throw that into cloning vats and uh, fill up my hand with six cost cards. And Nick Fury is really just a combo with Quinjet because then you get to play one of those six cost cards on turn five. Now, you probably wind up playing Devil Dinosaur a decent amount of the time regardless. However, in this scenario, I cannot play Devil Dinosaur. If I play Devil Dinosaur to any location, it would be sweet to be able to play that to cloning vats, but if I do, my opponent will Galactus me. But I do have a really good play here against Galactus. I can play the Living Tribunal, and that will put me to exactly five power at each location, and that will allow me to stop Galactus. So we have scared the Galactus away. Uh, unfortunately, uh, even with priority, we can't leader because we are losing by enough in sewer system that even if we generate a Galactus there, my opponent's Galactus will still beat me uh, four to... Um, what is that? Four to one. So I can't just get by with playing Galactus, but if I play the Living Tribunal, I will have a total of 15 power split across all three locations, and that will stop Galactus regardless of where my opponent plays it. So pretty sweet play. That is going to make my opponent have to play something a little bit different because the important thing here is they have the Daredevil vision with the Galactus turn, and this is a pretty obvious Galactus Nebula just for potential priority, uh, but then Daredevil to see if the coast is clear and Psylocke to ramp it out. So my opponent is going to have to defer instead to this play, which is still a pretty good one. And that is going to be a Hobgoblin. And that means that now my opponent can play a Galactus on turn uh, six and we're gonna be able to get them pretty good. I think that this was a really fun game because most of the time you're thinking, oh, we're just gonna see a leader, uh, but leader actually doesn't get played. Instead, it is Living Tribunal into Odin to send both of these goblins back over to my opponent. Really, really insane showing there from Nick Fury, giving me the two perfect cards to answer my opponent's Galactus. That's gonna be it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no luck's given. Peace.